Hi, uh, now I'd like to show you a little bit about soldering. And soldering is a means of attaching electronic components to circuit boards or to strip board. And what we use is solder, which is kind of like a metallic glue. It's conductive and allows current to flow through it. Um, when it's cold, it's flexible like that, it's easy to bend. To use it, we have to melt it, and we use a soldering iron to do that. So here's a soldering iron. I've switched on and let it heat up. These heat up to about 400 degrees, so they're very, very hot. So you need to be careful when you're using them and always put them back in the stand when you're not using it. I'll also use a wet sponge here to um, clean the tip of the soldering iron. For this demonstration session, um, I'm going to solder a couple of resistors and wires into some strip board. Okay? Um, before I start, it's a good idea to tin the tip of the soldering iron. Now, intermittently, you before you heat it up, it's sometimes a good idea to clean the tip of the soldering iron, maybe with some sandpaper. Um, when you're ready to go, uh, once it's hot, you can tin the tip of the soldering iron just by melting a little solder on the top of it. It helps it conduct um, heat better. So you have a nice shiny tip on it before you start. So I have a couple of components I have inserted into the strip board here. And I'm going to turn it over. Now it helps sometimes maybe to bend the legs back a little bit to stop the components falling out. Okay, so I'm just going to bend them slightly. Uh, another trick that can help to hold things in place is if you have a piece of sponge or foam and leave it underneath the board. Okay, flat components like that are relatively easy to hold in place. So I'm going to get myself a piece of solder. Now what's important is that both the component leg and the track are hot before you bring in the solder. Okay? Because the solder will only stick to hot surfaces. So I'm going to heat up both. I have the iron there in contact with both the component leg and the track. Then I'll bring in the solder. And as it gets hot, it should flow over the joint. So I hold it. Sorry, until. And then I pull it back. So a good joint has a nice mound of shiny solder like that. Do another one here. So again, heat it up first. Then bring in the solder. Wait until it flows and you get that nice shape. Okay. And then clean the iron intermittently. Okay, I'll do another one or two here. So heat it up, make sure it's in contact with both. And remove it. So the most likely cause of having bad joints with soldering is not having the two surfaces hot enough. Because the solder does two jobs. It serves to give electrical conductivity and it also physically holds the component in place. Okay, now that one isn't good. I need some more solder. Remove the iron. So when I'm done there, I'll come in and snip off the excess wire. So Cut it in as close as you can to the joint and be careful that you cover it because um, you don't want metal pieces flying into someone's eyes. So I'll just snip all those off. Okay, and that's all that's to it. If you make a mistake and you find you have to remove a component, that's possible too. Um, it's better if you don't have to do it, but if you do, one of these little devices is a solder remo remover. Okay, it's like a little um, vacuum. So you come in, bring in the iron, and melt the solder on the joint. Okay? So you can see there it's beginning to melt. Then when you see that it's flowing nicely, bring in the solder remover, hit the button, and it re removes the solder. Okay, so I'll do the other side of the joint of the component. So again, I'm heating it up here. Okay, it's melted, and again I take the stuff. So the solder is mainly removed there, and then I can gradually lever these little pieces and 
pull out the component from the other side. Just be careful because you can damage tracks easily um, trying to remove components. Just heat that another little bit. There we go. Okay, and you can redo it. Um, another point to keep in mind is some components aren't very tolerant of being heated for long. So generally, solder and as soon as the, the joint is done, remove the iron. Don't hang, hang about any longer than is necessary. Um, another tip for components, when you're building the can set, you might find it useful when you're putting in this little, um, soldering the components onto this board. It can be a little bit fiddly. And if you get them at the wrong angle, it won't work. So one tip is to put in the connectors into the sockets here first, and then place the board on top. Now there's another one to go there, but just so place it like that. And then you have it held in position and you know that everything's in the right place and solder along as you go. I have a few examples here of soldering. Um, there's a couple of examples here just of where things go wrong. So you might see these. So if your joints are dull or bumpy like those ones, um, or here's another example, they, they're not good solder joints. Okay. So the problem, or that one there, do you see there's kind of a, a hole around the component leg? If you have joints like that, it may physically hold the component in place, but you'll get poor conductivity or intermittent conductivity, which is a real problem because it's hard to track. So always try to make sure your soldering looks as much like that as possible. Okay, shiny mounds um, like that. And then you'll have no problems with connections.